Sure. Well, hello, welcome to Drawing with Fire. I'm Valerie, neighborhood biography artist. I'm joined with Hubby. Okay. And today we're doing shiny metal. Because, <laughs> of course, you want to. <laughs> so, this is the pattern. I ended up drawing it only because I was doing mine and you said you liked it. So Well, there's. I was going to do my own pattern. I was set on it, right? But then. Um, I walked in when you were doing your pattern, and it was pretty much how I would do mine. So I was like, you know what? Can I have yours? Yeah, <laughs> I did. Yeah. Then, yeah, because I, cause I imported it into, because <laughs> you put it on the chair drive so that I could, you know, alter it, you know. And it was the lines that I needed. I was like, wow, that's exactly what I need. Because that's what I do. So... Let's say hi to everybody. Hey, Kathy, Burl, Sonia, Spence, Mike. Did I miss somebody? Teresa. Hopefully I haven't missed anybody. Andrea. <laughs> Sheila. Alrighty, so we're going to get started. We're doing the gradient of metal first. So I am heating up my 18 small. Did you get Cindy? Hi, Cindy. No, I didn't. Heating up my 18 small. Bumping the camera around here at two now remember you adjust your that is not that's 18 small this is not what i need right? uh, let's see here it's going to be that's an extra small the one that looks like this all right the one right up in front on the second line on um, the second line to, to the left to the left to the left this one no, one. that one. I thought he already had it. I'm sorry about this. <laughs> Let me make sure that's the right one. No, that is not the right one. Oh. Things get moved around. It's, right, it's right there, that one. That was the one I grabbed. <laughs> Alrighty, so I'm at two. And what we need, in order for me metal to look shiny, you have to have the darks and you have to have the lights and they have to bump up against each other. So looking at the reference, I've got the brighter one on here first, but you notice you can really see where the light is hitting it, the horizon line, because metal will reflect the horizon line. So we have to make sure we get that or it's not going to look shiny. And the burn has to be smooth. So that's why I think this is a good one for beginners. Great at practicing gradient. Now remember, you can test on, you can do a couple of strokes on the back. We're doing basswood. I thought this would be a little easier to burn. I cut it down to four by sixes. Make sure I'm on the right side. And it is, uh, this side is uh, sanded to 400. So that's where we are going to get started. Now you do have your tester. You're already out. Yep, I'm testing it out already. Yeah, I'm going to go up to two and a half. Oh, this is a little bit more forgiving than the other one. A little more forgiving, yeah. The, the I, I do think basswood for, it tends to be a little bit better for beginners. Okay. All right, so I'm going to flip. So what's our focus today? What are we doing? We are going to start. We need to do the dark inside the glove as well as the outside. But I think we will start on the where do you want to start? I'm thinking well, the I'm, left one. I'm left-handed, so I tend to work from right to left. From right to left, okay. So I'm going to work so we're gonna with, start the with the darkest this one. darks, um, oh. starting on the right gauntlet. And you told me not to focus on the chain mail today? No, we're not doing chain mail. Okay, okay. so I'm just going to focus on getting the, so the I'm gonna details in. So I'm going to touch down quickly with most of the bottom, and I'm going to drag. And I'm moving very quickly. We need those darks, okay. but I'm actually going to go back down to two. We also need the light, just a hair underneath because it has a lighter kind of glow to it. So we need to make sure we get that in. And then we also need to use just the tip and undercut the separation between each section of metal. Now our darkest line going to be right up against the light. So I'm going to get that in there. It's right up against it. And that's because metal 
is a gradient that reflects back and forth. So we need to make sure we get that. And we got a darker tip right here. And we need to follow the planes in order for it to look rounded and three-dimensional, not flat. So we can always go back and adjust. Right now things are going to look really dark until we get more in there. Lighter, I'm going to be quicker. The biggest thing is definitely pin control. That is going to be our big word of the day, pin control. Glance up. Hopefully I said hi to everybody. I hate missing people. All right. So right up against where the brightest part is, we need a darker shadow. <coughs> Excuse me. And it looks like I forgot a rivet. Where is it? It is about here. It's this way. And then we got a rivet right about here. Here oval. There we go. And I checked my pattern too. Sometimes you forget stuff. Sometimes you miss it. So that dark line continues. So we're going to get that in there. And luckily, because this is small, we should be able to get it done, I would think, in uh, like two lives. Now, I know people were asking for birds, and we did look up the loon, but Jason's still trying to get used to shading, getting smooth shading, so we went with this. Plus I wanted to get, give him something he's interested in. Not that he's not interested in a loon. He's married to me. He, I'm saying nothing about that. But you're also not saying no. What? Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, let's get some of these darks and the reflections are what make metal shiny. So we need to make sure we have those contrasts. So one of the reasons why this appealed to me is because um, when I was first starting painting, I was doing a lot of like <laughs> shiny metal things and Thank you. Um, it so I had to learn like the ins and outs of doing you know really shiny mirror surfaces and chrome and stuff like that and so I understand that so like because of that I kind of felt like that this would be a good choice like I didn't actually like I do a lot of gauntlets in my work and so Val came up with it she's like let's draw let's do gauntlets and I was like yeah that sounds awesome but he didn't do the picture I wanted to do well you didn't pick the one I wanted yeah but this one uh, I like this one I like the one I picked. Did That's you ask me to pick? So mm. I'm picking. I picked. I need really big darks right up against it. And it's going to have to be darkened. You see, the minute we put this dark right against it, we start getting the feeling of it being shiny. Yep. Because the horizon line, the, the object, shiny objects are always going to catch that horizon line. There's always going to be like a, it's a, it's almost like a, there's four bands. There's like the sky, which is like varying degrees of darkness. But then you have the horizon line, which is always going to be like the lightest part. Because that's where the, the, um, the lightest part of the horizon is. And then it's oh it, that's always going to be contrasted against the top of the horizon, which is the darkest part. And then it's going to fade down gradually. And then depending on the level of polish on the metal surface, you get more or less detail. Like chrome, you get basically a, a warped mirror reflection of the environment around it. In metal like this, you get a suggestion 
of what you know what it's reflecting. So, so I'm just using the tip <coughs> to get in to the closer areas. Yes, to do that. that. And see, this is very used armor, so it's not as shiny. But it does get the reflections you're looking for. All right. So our bright, if we look at the sepia, let me switch over to the sepia. Because of course I got the sepia. That one. There we go. Oh, look, my finger's on it. We look at the sepia. We get we don't have, but a little bit of bright right along the rivets. So we need to pay attention to that, and that's why I switched over to the sepia. I use the color to create the pattern, so I can see all the details and where everything's at. And then I use both the color and sepia to get the tonal values right, and so it reads right. You can also use black and white. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, the lighter one you were looking at, that's like really light. That was so I could draw the pattern and see where everything's at. Now that I'm looking at the sepia, it's showing we need to go really dark. Just use the end. To get that shadow in between. So once I get some more of these darks, it's really going to read better. It will look like armor. It's already starting to shine. But the sepia definitely is showing me what's what. We might have to reset the router again. Last night, I didn't even think about this. I'm sorry. Last night, I had an instant where um, I was having trouble talking um, in chat when I was online uh. and it just came and went so it was like that way for like five minutes and then it subsided but all right now we're back <sighs> I I restarted the computer I think we're having internet issues not okay. plus it I fixed everything too all right hopefully that has start hi Kim hey Carmen hey Goha sorry about that after all the storms, things got messed up with internet and whatnot. So hopefully this will be better. Hopefully we're back. I'm just waiting to see. So Jim is, has an Optima. He's mainly using it for decorating his wood turning. Um, Let's see here, hopefully. Okay, all's gone now. Okay, now we're back. I am so sorry about that. Yep, sounds like we need to reset the modem. All right, so I had bumped up. I'm not sure exactly where it started buffering. It's kind of hard trying to monitor everything, you know. Well, that's my job. Well, I know, but now your job is learning. <laughs> now your job is learning to burn. Because this is the home of burning and learning. 
So you're gonna learn how to burn. Whether <laughs> I want to or not. Whether you want to or not, you're gonna learn how to burn. Alrighty. So I'm going to put in the dark glove. That way we can see. a bit more of how everything's going to look. We miss you too, Goha. Oh, I just realized my, you've got my stepping stool. I didn't move it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and bump up to three and a half because we're gonna go inside just right here so we can really define the, uh, the no, 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 you're fine. You okay. No, I got my feet up, it's okay, thank you. Oh, okay. No, because that means I have to stop what I'm doing. So I'm at three and a half and I'm going to go into the leather part of the glove just up against the armor. That way we can see what's going on contrast wise. And I'm using the top half of the pen and dragging up. And the reason I'm doing it this way is the darkest part is right up against the metal. So in order to get that, I need to be right up against it. There we go. And there's a lot of curves within. Now I am getting more smoke, and that's because I'm moving my pen slower. And basswood doesn't need as much heat. But because I'm on my easel, it's not in my face. I'll have to see how you do with the smoke. And I'm touching down in the dark part first that's already burned. It's fine. And dragging up. I'm getting a little smoke, but I don't mind it. It smells good. The slower I go, the darker it's going to be. Alright, so now it's going to be darkest right up against the metal. This is leather, so it's not smooth. There we go. Luckily, we can be a little messy with that. Looks like I kind of got off on my lines. That's okay. There we go. We'll just reshape it very quickly. You guys won't tell anybody. Unless they're looking at as long, unless somebody's looking at the reference photo, they're not gonna know that I got off on the glove a little bit. Alright, so now we can go back to the metal. Now that I can see that this is closer to the color that it's gonna be, I'm gonna go ahead and bump down to shy of three. Let's see here. So my, Mike is attempting artistic pyography now because he was doing it just for his wood turnings, decorating as well. Mm. Um, okay, Mike, in general, when you're burning like what I'm doing, it's flat pyography and then wood turning with pyography decorations. So if you sometimes if people get confused just say flat pyography because everything is flat we're, we're not working on an actual 3d surface in general meaning we're not working on a carving we're working on a flat piece of wood so now i can darken this it's still gonna be lighter than yeah, this was a good idea because, like, I understand, because I draw and paint this kind of stuff regularly. Yeah. And so I understand it. So, like, I think that's really important, like, when you're trying to learn a new thing, is, like, you try and put it into a context that you are familiar with so that you can make comparisons and adjust off of that. And so for me, 
that's really helpful because okay. I can because I, I, I understand what I'm doing here mostly <laughs> all right so all of this is a lighter so I'm moving very quickly the top half of the pen drag it down fill in some of this this actually yeah and then we got indents but those are darker underneath and get those in follow the shapes We're starting to get a little bit of armor going. Right now I'm using the sepia photo. Which one are you using? I'm using the color one. I can erase some. some of this graphite out of here and this is the walnut hollow graphite paper that we use for transfer Let's see here seeing if I missed anything real quick real quick so I got if you missed it I got the world biography uh, announcement that month uh, announcement video up it's only it's under seven minutes it's a quick video it explains that in fact I need to finish working on my pattern See that? that. Okay. because I changed some of my prompt subjects that I thought would work better with it. Luckily, it's only two prompts a week, so I can get it done. I'll finish drawing it tonight and get it transferred and start burning because my biggest part of my piece is the first prompt. Mother. That's my biggest. Let's see here, we got a curve here. Let's get that curve in here. I got off a little bit. I'm trying to fix my my lines. Luckily, it happens. And it's okay. darkest part is right at the horizon so this is basically if this was really shiny this is where you would see the houses well this is the sky this is the land so need to have that darker line that's what you're looking at when you're looking at shiny metals you're looking at the reflection what is around it So we haven't seen your piece yet. No. Can you see how you're doing? Yeah. Alright, let's see how you're doing. Hey, let me see here. Ooh. You better did a bit of outlining. Um, trying not to. It's okay. You can blend it in. Yeah, it's, it's looking it's, good. It's going to be You've gotten further than I have. <coughs> but it's looking good. I like. Mm. But Thank you. I have never done armor of any kind. And you do it. Often. Often. So maybe I need to push up and get to the other side just so we can have some opposite. But you're doing a really good job, love. Well, and you you can blend in. I appreciate you saying. So, that. I think for me it is 
really because I'm more comfortable with this subject. So I'm, I understand what I'm looking at. <laughs> okay, so Carmen's asking, someone asked me what the difference is in using rubbing alcohol uh, versus the alcohol, denatured alcohol that I use. Denatured alcohol has the least amount of water in it. And that's what we're trying to avoid on the wood is water. And rubbing alcohol has a higher content of water. Bye, Spence. Spence gotta go? Yeah, he gotta go early today. That's Let's okay. Go. He'll be back. Isop yeah, isopropyl, the rubbing alcohol has more water in it. That is the difference. Um, denatured alcohol tends to be used to clean metal to keep it from rusting so it, it can't have the water in it. Ah, everything's falling on me. That, al that rubbing alcohol does. That it's a clean Denatured alcohol is a cleaning alcohol. So that's why it has a much lower water content. Which means less likely of the grain raising when you go to clean the wood. <coughs> yep, so there is a difference. I've done a lot of research on on, on that specifically and why like in in the UK it's purple. Um, yeah. Oh in Australia. I've done a lot of research on the topic. And it's down to water content. For the most part, there are other uh, things in it. And they make it purple or a different color in order to keep people from drinking it because it is poisonous. And they also don't pay an alcohol tax on denatured alcohol. So that is why it is a, dyed a certain color. Now what I don't know for those in the UK, and Sheila would have to uh, let me know either way, is if um, the dye in denatured alcohol tints the wood. That I don't know. So that's the same for nail polish remover. It has a water content in it that's higher than denatured alcohol. I'm making a mess. Where do I, I get my uh, denatured alcohol, I either get it on Amazon or I get it at a home improvement store. Or a woodworking store. Um, I don't have my brand close to... I do have... Yeah, yeah, I don't have my stepping stool to push on. <laughs> Let's see here. Denatured alcohol. It, it also is listed as fuel because you can use it in alcohol burning lamps and other like and there's alcohol burning uh, like camper stoves too so that's what this is so that get back over here uh, There's, there's, oh, hmm. Didn't realize there was 200% alcohol. Huh. <coughs> Excuse me. Yep. I have not studied the uh, <laughs> perfume alcohols. I was just looking at this stuff. That in here. There we go. So we need to make sure to have the dark in the right place in the rivet because what that is is where it's casting a shadow and that makes the rivet look like it's standing out in 3D. So we have to pay attention to that. And the rivets are shiny too, so they have yep. their own miniature horizon line and that is affected by their curvature. So you got to make sure to get that too, because if you put like the dark part on top, then it, it won't look right. 
So plus the shadow, like what plus you're it, yeah. So there's like two aspects there to think about. And so far, I'm only using the 18s. I should be able to do actually do most of this with this pen. dark in there. Now here we have a little bit lighter. Move my pin faster. Try to get it smooth. Bring it up. Hold it. <coughs> Excuse me. Ooh. Sorry. Sorry if anybody needs your headphones. Apologies. That was that was loud. And and Avoidable, and on the onset was sudden. So. Sudden onset of sneeze. Mm -hmm. Get the dark underneath here. So the more we add to it, come on, yep. Oh, bye, Teresa. I hope you feel better. Take care. Oh, so Mike gets his uh, denatured alcohol in the UK and it's clear. Huh. But I think you're supposed to have a permit to buy it. Oh. Okay. <laughs> he was like, where did you get it? <laughs> Where's it at? I should let those two figure it out quietly without another word. Since I don't know the ins of outs there. Alright, so need to make sure that we get that highlight on each one of the fingers. So I need to leave a little leave a little separation. In between. Blend it out smoothly. So right here, we're not really glowing. We're just nice and smooth. Now, right now, you're not going to see the light because I have graphite down. So, let's see here. We'll go right up against. So we have a dark right here. Gotta get that in there. And we have our line. Now there is sheeting here. It's just not as I'm gonna bump up to three again so I can get my good darks underneath. Watch this curve. I'm going to tilt my pen just a little bit to the left so it's darkest underneath. But I'm still getting a burn so that it doesn't look outlined. Drag it down from the dark. There we go. Go ahead and bump back down to two and a half. Excuse me. Let's see here. This is a darker line. Now that I'm getting more darks in, this is a darker line. Separate the two. Let me see if I can find a place to put some white, just so you can see that plays off each other. Let's see here. Um, that one's not burned in yet. We got some. That's not burned in yet. <laughs> got some white here. Some white here. Let's see here. We got a white band that goes this way. We got that in. So 
So as long as you're paying attention, so this needs a bigger indent. Looks like I kind of screwed that up. So we shall make it. There we go. That feels better. It feels a little bit more real. So thus far, how are you doing? Um, I am understanding more what, what has to happen, I think. Are you feeling more confident about this? Well, I don't know about that. No. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, I feel better. I wouldn't say confident. I just, I think that I understand more of what I'm doing than I did before if that makes sense. Yeah. Well, each piece you do, hopefully, in theory, it gets easier and easier. Yeah. Oh, yeah, look. Let's see here. Okay, so in Goha says in Poland, you can get clear or purple on the denatured alcohol. Don't need a permit. And then Mike says, um, in Australia, you can also buy clear metho, unrestricted. Um, they call it methylated spirits there. I always forget what it's called. It's funny, it's all the same stuff, but we all have different names for it. Confuses things. Okay. That line up, and then I need to darken this line. Make it a little more cut. Right down, because we have a dark right here. There we go. See how just little things here and there make all the difference. Hey, Akram. So that's where I'm at. Let's see. Can we see? Wow, you are moving right along. I would say you could actually erase some of your graphite. I was planning on it, but I wanted to get the rest of the dark in on the gauntlet. All right, I'm not going to touch it then in order to keep from messing you up. Yeah. It's just some of this is going to look cleaner Yeah. once you get rid of the, the graphite. So. I figured. I'm going to get the dark in, in the center of the gauntlet. I think one thing we might want to do to make things easier for you is sit and do some gradient squares from dark to light and light to dark just so you can get used to how you need to hold the pen so that it's not quite gouging the wood right here when you touch down because it looks like you're holding it in an angle. That was last lock at focus there. Oh, this is lock at focus? I, I screwed up. Well, it's not a screw up. You just need to add some more of those and it'll be totally fine. But I'm just noticing you tend to hold the pen more to the left. Is it to the left or to the right you're doing it? Yeah, you're turned to the left. Mm -hmm. If you can roll the pen just a hair and try to keep it as flat as possible, um, you'll feel a little difference in the burn. Okay. It's looking good. Looking good, good. Yeah, even Sheila says that. Let's see here. So, uh, Akram is from Lebanon and he started doing pyrography two years ago. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. I love having people from all over the world because no matter what language you speak, art will always be a common language. Alrighty, so I am going to work to try to darken this even more so we can really see. So, I'm trying to make sure I keep my lines lined up. This curves like this, and then it goes 
like this. There we go. See the darks? You really got to have them. I know it can feel hard. It can feel overwhelming to go dark, but without your darks, you're just not going. To, it's never gonna feel finished. Those darks, as much as they are, can be overwhelming. They are your friend. They will make or break a piece. You can have perfect lines, but if you don't have the contrast, it's just never going to feel completely finished. It's okay to go dark. Oh, thank you, Aqua. He said, there's always new things to learn. Thank you. I try. I do try. That's why I want so many people to try World Biography Month. There's just so much going on with that. You will learn a ton. Yeah, let's get that in and that in. So I can try to get it a little more adjusted. I am glad that I'm keeping my World Biography Month piece a little smaller. Although, I might actually use the 8x14 board that I have. Yes, join our Facebook group. Greg and Sheila are, are fabulous moderators that I could not... <sighs> couldn't get so much more done without them. I would be so behind. I appreciate my mods so much. I'm just getting the shadow because we're also getting a horizon line right here because there's so many different planes we're going to get multiple horizon lines throughout this and we gotta pay attention to that that will make it feel more real so if you're doing a car and it has it's really shiny you gotta get all those in it's not going to feel right. I just noticed that I had one of my lines off. Or not included. Okay. So this is also going to be leather. This is stitching that's holding the stuff together. And on the stitching, just make sure I'm following the direction. Stitching doesn't have to be crazy. Make a couple of that bigger. Don't get to don't have to mod chat very often, but I did there. Guess so, because he was sharing a link. Alrighty, so we got that in. So we have this one here. So make sure we get it. Can't lose it. There you go. Then, let's see here, I feel off, why do I feel off? This goes this way, because it goes this way. I was off. Here we go. My lightest spot is here. I got lost. How did I get lost? I 
It can be hard burning small. It's easier to get lost in things. So this is our light. This curves. There we go. This goes this way. Then it turns. All right. That's where I was having a problem. I missed a turn. Didn't have all my directions. All right, that feels better. Kind of. Still actually messed it up. Still messed it up. Oh, you're a mess up. It's like Bye, Goha. Well, I guess to fix it. But in comparison to like some, somebody else's mess up, it's not a mess up. No, it's, it's a, I put stuff in the wrong place. In the wrong place. So now I'm going to use sandpaper going in the direction of the grain. The grain is a long cut. Lighten this up. And actually, if you start with 300 first, that was 400, I guess, 300. <coughs> 300. 320, sorry. Because this is also, ah, itch. This is the, the brightest part of the hand. So I need it. To be in the right spot. Now I am going over where I've already burned. That's not incorrect. But if I just keep sanding in one area, it's going to put a divot in the wood. This way, I can ensure that I'm getting all the area. It doesn't have to be a big area. And then. I can always go back and darken and fix. So I'm not going to use a knife here because this is a small shaded area. Why would you use a knife? So, uh, well, you can use a knife to scratch out burning as well, but I don't want it to be gouge. You have to be careful. is my sanded eraser. Don't use it very often. Now, if you didn't know I messed up there, you wouldn't see it. Another buffering again? <sighs> I wonder if we can start wrapping up. Sure. So next week, we are going... Because there's no reason to do the other hand, is there? I mean... I might. But it's no, I'm talking about on camera. No. again so we're just going to go ahead and start wrapping it up here so okay. they don't have to oh they're good again okay we're yeah we're going to go ahead and wrap it up here we're already at 52 minutes so oh, wow. so next week oh, 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 can i have yours yeah i want to race the graphite on this okay so race your graphite be quick. it'll start looking like metal but you can already see where the indent where it starts where it looks indented where things are moving. This dark inside on both the gloves makes all the difference though in popping the metal out. Alrighty. There you go. The gold's down. The mine's down. Wow, you're coming along. Look at that. And it's looking awesome. But see, like you've done it, I've never done it, so I'm having to feel my way around like, it, whereas you can yeah. just go. Like uh, um, understanding <coughs> how it's really important when you're doing metal 
like shiny metal to understand like the three dimensional structure and like mm -hmm. how light hits it. Yep. If you can wrap your brain around that, it makes things a lot easier. But like you said, I've done a lot of this, so it's more intuitive to me. So as opposed to trying to learn how to do the art and the technique, I'm learning the technique. You're learning the technique because you already know the art. Exactly. I need a drink. <laughs> When you get when you're sitting in a high chair and you're used to having a footstool to push off of to move around, but I'm like, so next week we will do the king meal. Let's see here. I feel like this goes here. It's, it's okay. You put it wherever. I'll rearrange them. Well, I'm trying to match the shapes. I don't know. You, you sound like a toddler. Match the 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 that's, shapes and that's put them where I'm at because I, I I know two pins <laughs> and I don't know where they go in your collection of pins. I know, so. I know. Alrighty, so we're gonna start wrapping up. So you know what to say with me. Yes. <laughs> You're awesome. You can do this. I, I don't know why. Maybe. You're a pyro artist. You're the pyro artist. Don't forget to hit subscribe and hit the like button. Oh, and share. We'll see you next week. Happy burning, guys. Bye.